Hey, Central family and friends. Uh, it is so great to be with you today on the Central Moment. And I love that I get to do this this time of year. Uh, I, I just love all of the excitement as we're looking forward to Christmas, making all the preparations. And uh, that means that we're right in the middle of the season of Advent, which is just a, a time dedicated to, to hope and to waiting and to preparation. Um, and uh, I, I just love all of all of the, the, the feeling, all of the excitement that we have. Uh, one of the favorite things that, that I love to do this year with Esther is uh, we enjoy walking through our neighborhood uh, whenever it's warm enough uh, just to see all of the Christmas decorations, all of the, the lights that, that people put in their windows or uh, around their houses or the trees that are outside and just all of the, the, the sense and excitement that that begins to build up as we're looking forward to Christmas Day. And, and those of you with kids, I mean, you know this. You, you can feel that sense of excitement just growing every single day. Uh, so you, you definitely have a feeling for that. And this sense of, of anticipation, of excitement about what's going to come, it's just such an awesome sort of built-in reminder of what this season is all about. It helps take us back to the very first Christmas, whenever all of God's people were waiting with anticipation for God to fulfill His promise that He had made so many times, centuries before, before when Jesus was, was born, uh, that He was going to send His Messiah his anointed one, who was going to, to, to bring light to the world, to break through the darkness. He, he was going to bring freedom to God's people who had been suffering for so long in, in exile and bondage. And they had this anticipation, this excitement, this hope that God was going to keep His promises just as He had always kept His promises. See, God had promised to send that Messiah. And Isaiah 60 uh, tells us one of the, the many, many prophecies, one of the many promises that God had made that He was going to send this, this light into the world. We can read it together, Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3, which says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. See, God made this declaration that He was going to send His light to His people, not just to be a, a, a beacon for them and not just to provide them with a way that they could see through the darkness, but it would be a light that would shatter the darkness all over the world, a light that would draw all peoples, all nations to come and to see what God was doing. This is the light that He promised. And so His people waited for this promise to come to pass. But it wasn't a passive waiting. It wasn't just sitting back and saying, well, you know, God said He's going to do this, so I hope, I hope He comes, I hope He shows up soon. No, this waiting was a, a time of active preparation a time of, of preparing the way for this, this promised one, this anointed one, who would be the light of the world to show up and to do all the things, to bring all the freedom that God had promised. In fact, as, as Jesus' birth drew near, as that first Christmas came closer and closer, God sent another child, uh, a cousin of Jesus, one that we might know as, as John the Baptist, who would prepare the way for Jesus. And just after John was born, his father Zechariah prophesied over him. And Luke chapter 1, at, at kind of the end of that very long chapter, uh, in verse 68, it says that Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because He has come and has redeemed His people. 
there was this knowledge, this, this recognition that these promises God had made were now coming to pass. And so we skip down to verse 76, which is now talking about John the Baptist and says, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for Him to give His people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the path of peace. And I love that this prophecy about John the Baptist it contains elements of the entire message of the gospel. That there's going to be forgiveness of sins. That God is with His people. That, that there's going to be this redemption that takes place. And, and peace that's going to come to those who follow after the way of the Messiah. The Anointed One, Jesus Christ. The light that Isaiah 60 had promised is coming. It is now breaking into the world. The Messiah is on the way. And John's role was to help prepare the way, to help God's people prepare their hearts to receive what God was doing. And that's the message of Advent. That's the message of this season of anticipation and excitement and waiting and hope that we prepare our hearts to receive all that Jesus is doing, to receive all that He has already done for us, and to receive that promise that we still have hope because He is he's going to come again. There's going to be another advent, another coming of Jesus to this earth. So we prepare our hearts to receive all that He has done for us and all that He is doing through us. As we've received Him, as we walk in His light, we can now share that hope and that light with all the people around us, with all of those who are still in darkness, who need to have freedom, who need to have that light pierce their darkness so that they can also receive forgiveness of sins and be free to walk in the light and to experience God's peace. So this season, I just want to encourage you, as we prepare our homes to celebrate Christmas, let's also prepare our hearts for everything that God is doing. Let's share the light and the hope that we have in Jesus with the world around us that, that needs it, especially this year. Let me pray with you today before we wrap up our time together. Father, I thank you I thank you for this season of Advent. I thank you that this is a time of, of waiting, but not a waiting of uncertainty, a waiting of hopeful, expectant anticipation. Because God, we remember that you keep your promises. And so even as we wait to celebrate, Lord, we recognize that you are keeping your word, that you are at work in this world. And God, all that you have done in us, all that you have delivered us from, Lord, it's, it's what you want to give to the world around us. And so, Lord, help us to be your messengers of peace this season. As we walk in peace, Lord, let us share the peace that we have in you with others. Help us, God, to be a blessing and to bring your light that you sent into this world, Lord, to those that are still in darkness. And help us, Jesus, to never forget that you are at the center of all our celebrations this season, that our hearts would be set towards you and all that you have done and all that you are still doing. And Lord, as we look forward to you coming again to set this world to right, to bring us into our eternal inheritance. Lord, help this be a time where we can be your messengers to proclaim the good news that you have come and that you are the God who is with us and the God who saves. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again for more Central Moments throughout this week.